My name is Scott Marlow. I work with the Rural Advancement Foundation International. This is one of our series of videos about disaster recovery for farmers. And today we're talking about how to document losses in a disaster. One of the first rules that we say after a disaster is camera before chainsaw. You always want to document the damages and all the things that have happened before you begin cleanup and before you begin to repair them. Everyone wants to get out and wants to get things cleared. The only exception to that rule is if there's some kind of an emergency where you have to get to cattle or animals to get feed in or where there are people or something like that. But other than those kinds of situations, always document before you get in and start to clean up. The other issue is you always want to be in touch with the agencies that you're working with as early and often as possible. So whether it's FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or the USDA FSA, Farm Service Agency, whatever agency you're working with, you want to be contacting them and you want to be communicating about those damages as early as you can and documenting what those damages are with those agencies as quickly as possible. When we're looking at documentation, there are a couple of rules that we have to follow. The first is that the best documentation is from a third party who's uninterested. That means that if you're taking documents, if you're writing things down, it's not as good as if you have something from someone else where they looked at it or it's someone else's records, something from someone that you bought something from or sold something to. Even if you have someone who is a trusted advisor, like an ex a cooperative extension agent or a crop consultant or um, someone from an agency, even someone from our agency, come out and look at what's there and help you document it, having that third party really helps solidify that documentation. The other thing is that it's important to take notes at the time. It's what's called contemporaneous notes. So if you're taking notes about what the conversations you're having or what you're doing in terms of the recovery, it's important to take those notes at the time. We encourage people to get one of the cheap theme notebooks or a, a school notebook, pick up a cheap one and just carry it with you and write down all of the conversations that you have, the things that you do, all of that documentation. So basically, in a disaster, you're documenting three times, three things. The first is, value before. And when we do the value, value before, you can reconstruct that in a lot of different ways. A lot of times people will have lost their records, lost their files in a, in a flood or in, the, in the, a hurricane or in a disaster. And so you have to go back and you have to document what the value was of the things that were on your farm the day before. There are lots of ways of doing that. So first thing is what you buy. So things that you bought, you can go back to vendors or stores or places that you purchase things and, and get that documentation in the history of what you bought. You can show how many chicks or how many cattle or how many, you know, how many acres worth of inputs you bought from them. And that documents what you had out, maybe seed purchases, other things like that. The second is sold. That is going back to places where you have sold things over time to show how much of it was still on your farm or what the value of those things have been in the marketplace. So if you were selling vegetables, that shows your sales records from just before the storm show what the value was of what you had in the field. And the third big place is financial records. So the financial records can be um, the places where you establish that value in the past. In a disaster, what we want to do is go back to wherever you had established the value the most recently. That might be a loan document. That might be a loan that you filled out. That might be credit card statements. Um, one of the things that we encourage people to do is to pick up, um, is to order their credit report. That way you can go through and see what credit you have out, what things are still outstanding so you know what you need to deal with but the bank um, would, would hold on to a copy of that loan application, and so you'd be able to go back and ask for that. The other place is taxes. Um, your tax records would have shown what money went out, what money came in, and what would still be there. Often has the present value of things on your farm. 
So all of those financial records can be reconstructed and, and put together to give it as close a picture of what was present the day before the storm as possible. The next place we're looking is, what's the value after? And again, looking at the value after, we're looking at a lot of the same places. We're looking at what you bought, what you had to buy, what you sold, and then going back through on those financial records at all, as well. So after the disaster, you're looking at what's still in the field, what can be recovered and what can't. Um, the other place to go on the value after is if you're talking about a structure or equipment or something like that, um, you can get appraisals or you can get uh, an estimate on what the repairs would cost. It's often good to get those third party estimates, even if you're gonna do the work yourself, to document what the cost of those, of those um, repairs will be and, and to document that, that, um, those losses and that damage. Once again, it's, it's great to have someone else who can come in and give some of those estimates for you as well. And again, that can be you know, an extension agent or, or, or someone that you work with, any kind of a farm advisor. The last thing that you wanna document really well is the process. The disaster assistance process is very important. It's, it's very confusing, it can be very complicated, and there are a couple of different reasons why it's really important to, to document the process that you go through after the disaster. What I'm talking about is holding on to that notebook and every time you talk to someone in an agency or you have a conversation or you ask a question, write down in that notebook what you asked, who you asked, what they said, and what the next steps are. What that does is it gives you a record where both you can go back and make sure of what you were told because uh, you know it, it's really hard to remember details and people don't remember a lot of stuff so being able to follow through and being able to see what the um, what the issues were and what you talked about and what you need to do is very important to have those details the other issue is it's really important to save all of the paper that you've got any communications that you receive, any applications that you fill out, anything like that, always make sure that you're printing out a spare copy and that you're holding on to it. Remember that the agencies and the offices that you're working with, the folks in those offices, they also have been through this disaster. They may be working on their own farms and homes. They may have, you know, they, their offices may have been flooded as well. And so it's important that you keep a hold of the records because you never know what you might need down the line. All of this takes time. The recovery process takes a very long period of time. And so as you go through it, and as you walk through the process, it's important both to make sure that you can get access to whatever assistance comes up and whatever access, access is gonna come online, but also that you're documenting what you've got, you're documenting the conversations that you have, because if you're documenting those conversations, you can go back and you can show that you had done what you were supposed to do. It's always good to keep in contact and to document all those conversations and to keep that because you never know things might come online two or three years well after the storm. So to review, always camera before chainsaw, document everything. Look at what the value was before and what the value is after. And that value after includes the costs of recovery, whatever you have to do to the land to clean it up or whatever you have to do to, to allow that production to take place and for it to be back to productive cap capacity. So document before and after, and then also keep all your paperwork and write down the conversations that you have because it's really hard to remember, it's really hard to keep straight in your mind, and down the line, that's what we're gonna draw on if we're trying to get access to programs and access to other things that might help your farm get back on its feet. And, and move forward well. Thank you.